So, here we go. Welcome. Um, yeah, a little talk about Symfony on Docker. Uh, first, before we uh, jump into the content, a uh, small warning. Um, this won't really, I won't go into the topic of fixing the performance issues with Docker and Symfony. Um, look to Docker Sync for that, use Linux or use a VM and use NFS to the host or whatever. I won't cover that. It's not my problem to solve. This is the first time I do this talk, so bear with me, including demo effect. Let's see about that. Uh, short about me, uh, or who? So I'm, uh, I'm a Norwegian. I uh, like a lot of different things. I've been doing PHP for quite some time. Um, I contributed to Symfony, I contributed to Fast Composer, Fig. Not necessarily big things, but just enough to get me allowed to contribute. Uh, and I've been working in, in EC for quite some time, at, um, and now leading the engineering team. Uh, EC Systems is a global company, been doing CMSs since uh, 2001. Most known is EC Publish. Um, we have many partners, quite um, not as big community as uh, Symfony, but um, we have a community in all pieces of the world or all corners. Uh, and current products we have are EC Studio and EC Platform. Platform being then the um, continuation of uh, EC Publish, open source content management system, uh, possible to use as a full CMS and also as a headless, meaning just APIs and REST APIs. Uh, and yeah, use Symfony full stack since 2012. Uh, so let's jump into it. Let's get started. Uh, what I will, um, for this first part, what I will cover here is how, well, <laughs> you all know how to clone the Symfony, but yeah. Adding an environment variable file, adding a Docker file, adding a Docker compose file, and, well, opposite, Docker ignore file. Um, and together, see, show you how this just easily boots. So I'll get to the more advanced stuff later. Um, this, I think all of you know, just clone. Um, Symfony standard, jump into it. Add the first file, uh, environment variables. This file is actually optional, kind of, um, but it allows you to set the um, default environment variables, so you don't have to specify them all the time when you do um, commands, so you don't have to ha have them specified in your command line. Uh, second file, Docker file, is maybe the more complex file. Um, this is just an example, but in this case, uh, I omitted a small section here to make it fit on the screen, but in this case, just pulling in the default um, PHP image from uh, the official image on Docker Hub, the one with Apache to make it simple as possible, because then we don't need to deal with, um, with uh, virtual host settings and stuff like that. Uh, we're supposed to set a maintainer. Um, we need some environment variables. We want to use prod here in this case. Uh, we copy in the files from the Symfony standard project. Then a couple of lines I omitted there regarding installing Composer and the packages it needs, like git and unzip and so on. And then just installing all the vendor stuff, clearing the cache, and setting per permissions. Um, so that's kind of it for the, the app itself. Uh, if we jump to uh, the docker ignore file, this is also just um, a gist, but if you use, for, for instance, PHP Storm, you can ask it to create uh, such a file and it asks you for a template and it will fill in everything you need for, for Symfony, for instance. So this is just some of those things. But basically about ignoring certain folders to not have to transfer these to the Docker daemon back and forward. So in this case, it's supposed to not, basically to ignore the cache and logs folder. Um, pulling it together, um, while well, still a quite simple example, Docker Compose, you specify the services 
Uh, in this case, we only have one because it's just Apache with PHP as a module. So we specify we want to build. We specify the name of the image uh, that we're going to create, and we specify port mapping that we're going to set up for this. And then also the environment variables we want to pass on to the image to get the Symfony to pick those thing two up. Um, so um, that leads us to demo time, the first one at least. Um, for those that want to check this out, this very, very simple uh, example, uh, I pushed it online on, on GitHub. It's just a fork of Symfony standard with uh, added files. So, no, wrong window. Oh, this is way too small. But okay, what I did there is I typed in docker compose up um, dash d no build. So I'm just starting uh, the, the service as a daemon in the background. Um, And hopefully it should be up and running. Yeah, so that's the, the full page on the Symfony standards. There is nothing advanced here. Uh, what we just did is just getting the Symfony standard up. So there's absolutely no dependencies on database. There's almost no dependencies on PHP modules or anything. So this is not enough for a full setup. Most of us needs way more than this. So let's jump back into it and have a look if how we can add more stuff. Um, yeah, so in order to do that, let's talk about some conventions around Docker and also around the official images and uh, specifically the PHP image. Uh, entry points, data directories, environment variables, and how it translates to Symfony, uh, and image layers. Um, smaller thing, but nice to know about. So the first thing I mentioned was entry point. This is a convention you'll see in a lot of official images around. Um, I mentioned a few of them here, My, MySQL, MariaDB, which is Mostly actually the same image, just different binary. Uh, Postgres, Solar. So in this case, what it's doing, you can mount a folder into the container here for this MySQL or whatever. Um, the folder is shown on the first line, docker entry point unit DB. And this will just, on the boot of this container, loop over files in this directory, uh, run the shell scripts, apply the SQL or whatever relevant for the image. So this um, makes it possible to use an official image for a bit more stuff uh, without having to extend it. So without having to add your own Docker file, do your own logic and so on, you can just reuse it and imply some shell scripts to do what you need, or SQL. Data directories is maybe a bit more um, interesting if you want to actually use it for a database dump or something like that. Uh, you can basically create a, a database and take a backup of that and then just mount it into this again later when you boot up your environment. So these are some examples. It, the first one is um, for MySQL, then it's Postgres, and then it's Elasticsearch, which all have this. Uh, environment variables. Um, so, as you might or might not know, the symphony underscore underscore um, environment variable exists, um, but it has a couple of drawbacks. Basically, if that parameter you're trying to set is already set in your parameters file, it will not be used from the environment. So it's the opposite uh, logic of what we want in this case, at least from my perspective. You might have some defaults in your parameters file, and you want environments to override it if it's set. Uh, so we can't really use it for, at least not for my use cases. Uh, so instead, just do a simple import with a PHP file instead of YAML and, or XML. Um, and there you can do whatever you want. 
whatever, the only thing you need to keep in mind is that in this case, this will only be executed when you first boot up Symfony, so when the, con when the container is compiled. After that, this will not ex even execute. It will be cached in the compiler cache. But hopefully that's fixed. Last night, uh, this pull request was merged, and as of hopefully as of Symfony 3.2, uh, we don't have to deal with those files anymore. So there will be native support for that. So if you're interested in this topic, check up the news for 3.2 in November and see how you use this. Um, but as far as I understood, um, and I guess you can confirm, uh, this is always applied. You don't have to uh, clear the container cache or, yeah. This is new. Yeah, so it's dynamic, so you don't have to clear the cache all the time. Um, uh, one other thing to know about regarding images. Um, each instruction in a Docker file leads, at least by default, to, um, to a new layer. Uh, I don't know if you, I haven't really gone into the basics of uh, Docker here now, because I assume people have seen it before, but Docker images contain of several layers built on top of each other. Um, and each instruction that I showed in a Docker file creates a new layer. Um, this has many benefits in terms of cache, not having to rebuild the same <coughs> Uh, sentences all over again. If it hasn't changed, it also means it can reuse stuff from other images, and it's the same um, layering stuff being do used there. But it also means that files added in one layer and la uh, later removed is not really removed. The, the size of the whole image is still containing those files because it's a different layer. Um, so this is kind of good to know about when you need to create your own image and you want to optimize size. So this again means that you'll do things like this. I, again, omitted a few things here, but this is uh, an example of how you um, might uh, extend um, the PHP image. You set up different dependencies, you do apt-get update, uh, you remove the, the update cache, um, you extract the PHP source because it actually is compressed inside the PHP image to save space, so you need to extract it before you can do anything with it. And then you do different commands that I will show you later, like um, install plugin, configure plugin, enable plugin, and so, so on, when you need to add your own PHP plugins. Uh, or add Blackfire, or Redis, or whatever, which is not in the PHP source, but from other sources. After you're done with all that, you can do the source delete. So it deletes the source, just remaining the, the compressed file. And you also purge out um, the apt packages that you don't really need in the live instance, all to save space. And this is in one command to, to make sure that it doesn't add up on the layers. So that was kind of the point. Uh, yeah, so I guess only thing you can say about this is it's a bit, um, feels a bit backwards maybe in the first time you enter it, um, but that's how it is. Um, continuing on the advanced use cases, kind of, well, not the super advanced, but at least a um, bit more advanced than what I showed in the beginning. So for this, instead of um, showing a bunch of slides, I'll rather show you some code if I manage to magnify the stuff. But is, this also is online. Um, so you can find it online when I put the slides online. Um, let's try. Um, I guess the people on the back cannot see this. 
You can see it? OK. Um, so here to expand on what I was showing earlier, um, image that is extending the official PHP image, the FPM image. So this then acting as a FPM application uh, with the Symfony code inside. In this case, we use it for Easy Platform, which is a Symfony application. Um, first, do the applicate install of the packages that we need anyway in the image. For instance, stuff like uh, needed for GD, for instance, or curl, or, or intel, for instance. Those things need to stay in. Otherwise, they won't start. Um, and we also need a couple of things for Composer, because in this case, we're actually running Composer on build to make sure we always have the vendor stuff defined in the log file. Um, it doesn't need to be like this, but at least if you, if you do it, you, you'll need a couple of dependencies. Uh, then back to the, the section I showed earlier, but now the, the full version. Um, I'll skip the first part, which I already shown. So it was the installation of the dev packages. And then going on to, um, to extract the source. Then further on to uh, configuring different uh, extensions. The MySQL I, PDO, and MySQL GD with all the different things we, we want to take advantage of there. And then installing a bunch of extensions. In our case, we, want, we need Intel. Um, Symfony prefers that. XSL in our case, um, and MySQL, and so on. And we, of course, want to upcrash. Um, then on to installing Blackfire, um, <coughs> just extension here. Pulling it in from the source or the, the tar file, uh, installing it, and then removing it afterwards to not spend time or space on that. Then Redis ex extension, enabling it, and then lastly, just removing everything again, or, well, removing the thing, stuff we don't need. Um, yeah. So that was mostly relevant to, to layering. Um, if we move on to a different topic. So in this case, um, just starting with this first, to mention the first uh, environment variable here, uh, you can, and the topic I want to show now is that you can actually um, do compositions of several Docker Compose files. So you don't have to have one uh, gigantic file with everything in it. You can split it up into several things. I'm not saying this is necessarily the way to go, but it's definitely possible. So how it's done is either in the command line, you specify several files, or you specify a composer file environment variable. Uh, and this needs to be separated per file, either with column here on Mac and Linux, or um, another symbol on Windows, which is very convenient that it's not uniform. But anyway, um, this is all online on the, the Docker documentation. So in this case, we're pushing, pu uh, pulling in a, a prod YAML file, doing the base si system. We're adding Redis. And we're adding Blackfire. So in sum, we'll boot up a lot of services. And I'll jump over to those. So first, for the, um, the prod environment, um, we have our app, which we're building. We have our um, web um, service, pulling in Nginx, uh, setting different uh, environments. Not too uh, proud of the last commander to, to inject a virtual host. It should be improved, but that's one way of doing it. Um, then lastly, uh, database. Um, it should be the last one, yeah. 
here also setting different uh, environment variables, um, forcing it to, for instance, set a random root password so that it's not um, possible to log in with the root actually. Next file would be um, basically the Redis um, environment. So here you can see actually uh, what I talked about, about doing um, compositions. So in this case, we're just pulling in Redis uh, as a new image. Uh, but in addition to that, we add additional environment, uh, environment variables to the app uh, service. So we add basically how to reach the Redis uh, service and also making the current uh, application aware that you should introduce Redis and not the file system cache in our case. Um, or whatever you need. So this is custom environment variables for our uh, application. Um, but you will typically have to tell your application, okay, Redis exists and it's found here. Um, that's mostly it on that one. And on the last one, it's not really that exciting. Uh, on the Blackfire one, it's super simple. Um, but it goes to show how simple it is to actually add Things like, for instance, uh, Blackfire. So in this, file, in this case, you don't need to extend anything. There's just a new, new image, um, the Blackfire agent, I think, yeah. Um, and you just for this image, you would need to set up a couple of uh, tokens, the ID and the token. Uh, but given the extension is already built into the PHP image, everything there is set up. Um, last thing I wanted to show is how you, how this actually benefits you in terms of uh, Travis or CI in general. Because I don't know how many of you are using Travis or using um, Jenkins and you kind of end up with a lot of um, shell scripts and dealing with it. It sets up the whole environment. Uh, maybe some, not so much on Jenkins because you already have PHP installed and everything you need, but on Travis, which is, um, well, not really our, your service, it's kind of default every time. It's a new VM every time and you need to specify what you need. Um, it can become a lot of shell scripts. So using Docker, um, for functional tests, you can end up with something like this instead. So there's no shell scripts. There's just booting up the um, images and everything that you use on your local setup or on your Pred setup also works on your CI. Um, at least, maybe not so much on the local setup yet because of the problems with dev performance, but at least that's the idea. And then if, um, if everything passes here, then we can push it to Docker Hub, for instance. Even though Travis, unfortunately, doesn't do this um, after all the jobs are done, so it's per job. So lastly, um, Lastly, I have a different environment running here, the one I've now been showing you with uh, app, web, database, Blackfire. Um, well, Redis is not um, set up here, but doesn't make any difference, uh, except being unstable sometimes. But so this is here running on a different port, so I have it both running at the same time. Uh, it's just Symfony application with everything set up with PHP 7. So we actually have here some system information. So that's Symfony 7010 built this morning or something um, after I managed to get the Wi-Fi running. Um, <coughs> and yeah, so if we go back to the slides, Yep. 
Yeah. We're actually done. So hope that gives you some, some things you can use in your everyday start with Docker or getting to know Docker. Uh, there is a lot more advanced stuff to get uh, to know with Docker. Um, I didn't cover anything like Swarm and uh, Kubernetes here, but that's a bit beyond getting started. So there is a ton of things to learn. Good luck. <laughs>question about your um, docker compose file you were using um, like bash variables do they come from the uh, end file the b bash variable yeah in your docker compose file you look like you're using dollar mysql host and such uh, regarding why bash and not shell or or what did you think about regarding that um, I was just wondering where the variables came from I, I didn't think you could use variables in Docker compose I, I'm just checking I wasn't insane Yes, yeah, you can. Uh, so um, in the Docker Compose file, you can use the environment variables from the end file. Okay. Uh, so you can both use it in the, um, like you saw, I used it on the image name. So you can swap it in, in environment variables because we try to use this for testing and try to be able to test different things. So not hard coding it in the Compose file helps us. Uh, but you can also set it in the, the command um, that you pass on. But you need to be a bit careful there because um, Either it's um, evaluated by Docker Compose, or you would like it to be evaluated inside the, the container. And you, there's a difference there on, uh, on how you specify it. I think you need to use two dollar signs if you want it to be evaluated inside the container, for instance. I've had the use case where I basically had to pass in different variables to the Docker Compose file for um, dev versus say, staging environments, and uh, I think it'd be useful to pass in the variables like that, way. that way. I didn't realize you could do that, so that's good. Yeah. Cheers. Hi. Uh, just wondering if you're using Docker in your development environment uh, and or your production environment. Like, to what level are you using it? Are you, is it your plaything, or do you actually use it for meaningful development or production? We're not using it for development yet. So um, me and a couple of others are using it, but we haven't really gone to the stage where we hoped we would be about like standardizing using Docker within our whole team um, because of the performance issues. So those running on, on, on Linux can use it, but they already have their environment. And, and Docker also, on, on a second hand here, also adds some abstraction. So, it's, uh, so if you already have your dev environment, it might be a bit, a bit hassle to have to deal with that all the time. So it's not definitely not perfect, but yeah, not yet. <laughs> okay, thank you. But I, I know um, I know others here uh, use it. I think in Vika use it um, heavily during their everyday work, for instance. They, they have uh, the, their own software on this, Continuous Pipe, for instance. So if you're interested in on advanced use cases around using it on an everyday case basis, ask uh, one of the Envika guys. Okay. Guess that's a break then. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>